Let's do this one more time. Good evening, my friend. Welcome to the show. I am Lou Mangiello. Thank you for being here for WDW Radio Live. It is Wednesday night, my favorite night of the week. Hurricane Ian, notwithstanding. Uh, we are having a mini sort of keep yourself safe, stay off the roads, hurricane party and trivia night tonight. If you're watching live, thank you for being here. I hope if you're in Florida, you're safe, you're hunkered down, and like you, like me, you ordered a case of, um, you literally ordered a case of like frozen food just in case, because I'm not a crazy person and don't try and clear the shelves at Publix, but I digress. If you're watching on the replay, join us live every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a thing. If you're watching for the first time, please let me know where you're watching from and how long you have been listening to the show. Um, yeah, it looks like, um, as I was in the middle of getting ready tonight, somehow um, it just went live all by itself. So that's a uh, that's a look at what happens behind the scenes. It's it's not there's no magic, right? There's just no magic. It's just me scrambling to get things done. Uh, thank you for all of the well wishes. Um, I did actually. Some of you thought I wasn't serious this morning. That I literally had a speaking gig today, and which was fine. The, um, we we were able to to beat the rain this morning and uh, not have to worry about it too much. I just caught the tail end as I was coming home. So uh, all good, all safe around there. Um, I did see, I know some of you had asked me, I used to live in Naples and then Marco Island and they're getting hit really, really hard. So hopefully everybody down there is, uh, is okay. I think, I think we should be fine. We'll, uh, I think tonight we'll, we'll start getting the, the brunt of it, but uh, we'll see. I am, I am, as they say, um, I have battened down whatever sort of hatches I have at the house, so we should be good to go. So hopefully wherever you are, you are safe and have food and power um, as well. So a couple of quick things first. Hope you enjoyed this week's show with Disney legend Jody Benson, the voice, the heart, and the soul of The Little Mermaid. Um, it was really a thrill. I w the only thing I wish is I wish I would have had more time because I had so many more questions. There's so much more I wanted to know and learn from Jody. But you can obviously go and check out her new book, uh, Part of My World at partofmyworldbook.com and on amazon.com. It was a uh, it was a lot of fun to chat with her and learn that the Part of My World song was almost cut thanks to a, like a six-year-old kid and his popcorn. Interesting how things happen there. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this week's episode. If you do, please do me a favor, share it. Tell a friend and ask them to, excuse me, listen and subscribe as well. If there's somebody, if there's somebody that you would like me to have on the show that you'd like me to interview, send me a message, post it in the clubhouse, do a poll in the clubhouse, and we'll see if I can, uh, if I could make that happen for you. Uh, but Amanda says she is awesome. She is awesome. I agree a hundred percent. Ashley says she was great on the Muppets panel. I'm so sorry that I didn't get a chance to see that during uh, D23 Expo. If Disney loses <laughs> power, Lou, can they send all the snacks to your place for safekeeping? The chance of Disney losing power because they literally have their own power plant there is slim to none, um, in addition like, to the solar farms that they have. However, I understand the the spirit of that, and I would be happy to take over any um, any snacks, preferably of the chicken nugget kind that Disney would like to share. So... So you go. That is um, that is this week's show. Matthew is watching from Howell, New Jersey. I used to go to a BMX track in Howell. That's all. That's my connection to Howell, New Jersey. There used to be a BMX track on Route Nine in Howell. All of those things just showed how old I was. And I mean, I wasn't very good, but that was sort of the extent of any <laughs> athleticism that I did or did not. Still don't have. A uh, quick reminder before I forget: this graphic is wrong. As many things I do, is there are now three seats left for Momentum, October 22nd and 23rd. Um, I said it on this week's show. I'm going to share it with you again here. I won't go too far into what this is. I just had to call that Momentum yesterday. I really, like I'm telling you, this is not a sale thing. I think uh, this is going to be our best Momentum ever. And if you use code PODCAST200, one word, Podcast 200, you'll save $200 off your ticket because the purpose of Momentum, as it always has been, is to help you and to try and get you there. So if you're interested, if you have any questions, shoot me a message, let me know, or just go to loumangelo.com slash Momentum. What year was that? Katie Duncan. So, God, let's see. Let me do the math. Uh, 
it's like 82, 83, maybe somewhere around there. You don't want to even know what I was wearing back then. So, um, David Shoney, can't wait for the fireside chat. I'm excited to have you um, coming back again this year. I've got some, there's some stuff we need to talk about during the fireside chat and a few other chats we're going to have along the way. Uh, I did not get a, a dozen funky chicken sandwiches. I did not get any PDQ to go. Um, I, I did not prepare well other than um, other than sort of ordering my box of stuff. So we'll see. As long as we keep power. Um, let me see. Uh, Carrie's from Point Pleasant. Thank you to our Florida friends. Um, I miss Point Pleasant. I miss my mom's house in Point Pleasant. Louis Ramos, I, I very well may have been wearing parachute pants, not to the BMX track, but uh, certainly during that time. All right. So tonight, as promised, um, I called this a hurricane party because I want to try and keep, if you're in Florida, hopefully keep you home. You shouldn't be out on the streets anyway, but I thought we would have some fun. Do a little bit of trivia tonight and um, and just sort of uh, ride out the storm. If for some reason your screen goes black, it means I lost power and I'm going to have to figure out a way to heat up my dinner for tonight. So, all right, let me see if I can get this uh, hurricane party started. Let me switch over to what I need to do here. Let me get this started. We're going to do a little general Walt Disney World trivia. We haven't done this in a few weeks. So I thought this would be a lot of fun. Let's see if we can get it. There you go. Oh, perfect. When it works, it works. So there you go. We will uh, we'll, we'll count down. The way this is going to work, it is going to be multiple choice. And as the questions come up, I will read them to you. You All you need to do is type in the number, uh, sorry, the letter. It's the letter of the answer that you want. The magical software will tally up all the scores at the end. And who knows, maybe I will give the winner um, I have lots of stuff in the prize closet. Maybe I'll give away, you know what, I will, just because. I'm going to give away something from the WWDO prize closet. It's a mystery prize because it's a mystery to me too, And uh, but there's a lot of cool, fun stuff down there. Stuff that I'm still uncovering from the garage. But anyway, two, one, let's get started. Let's get, there you go. In Ellen's Energy Adventure, I'm sorry, it's numbers, not letters. I get confused. In Ellen's Energy Adventure, when Ellen welcomes in Bill Nye to apartment, he actually says that he came to see, one, her dog, two, Albert Einstein, three, Chris Berman, back, 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 or four, Alex Trebek. Uh, who, did, uh, who did Bill Nye actually say that he was coming in to see when he came into Ellen's apartment in Ellen's Energy Adventure, briefly known as Ellen's Energy Crisis. May you rest in peace. The uh, the supercomputer is tallying all of your answers. Who misses Ellen's Energy Adventure? I mean, I, again, not comparing it with having that, or Guardians of the Galaxy, I sort of liked Ellen's, not just because, okay, for the most part, because it was air conditioning and it was about 45 minutes long. The supercomputer not being super. There you go. The answer is obviously number two. It was Albert Einstein. Uh, kudos to those who said Chris Berman. And I don't even think Ellen had a dog that was a red herring or a red dog. Um, Becky is going after the high score for wrong answers tonight. Why should this week be any other? Different than others. All right. Who provides the voice for Madame Leota in the Haunted Mansion? Is it Kathy Beaumont, Eileen Woods, Eleanor Audley, or Adriana Casalotti? Now, all of those names should sound hopefully familiar to you as voices of characters in some classic Disney animated feature films. One of those lovely young ladies was also the voice and is still the voice of Madame Leota in the Haunted Mansion. By the way, if you have not been to Disneyland during Halloween, yeah, you gotta go, because even if you don't love Nightmare Before Christmas, the Nightmare Before Christmas overlay is just spectacular. Uh, it is like a completely different attraction. I don't love the film, but I love the overlay. And of course, the answer, I'm waiting for the supercomputer to do its thing. The answer is, of course, Eleanor Audley. Uh, this was good. Wow, a lot of people got confused by this one, which makes me think that you know the names, you recognize the names from a number of different films. I think we talked about some of these when we did our, didn't we do like a show about like Disney legends, like female Disney, I don't know. I'm, 
I know we've talked about it, but I'm going to do a, you know what? I'm going to feature one of those in an upcoming show. Where can you find Java Jumper, Irrawaddy Daddy, and Banyan Boy? Becky, no, those are not the name of super sweet cocktails. Is it Tom Sawyer Island, Cali River Rapids, <clears throat> the jungle, spelled incorrectly, the Jungle Cruise, or Expedition Everest? I was very sleepy and had such a headache today when I was doing this, so forgive the few typos. Java Jumper, Irrawaddy Daddy, and Banyan Boy which also could sound like boy bands from the 1990s. Where could you find them? Would it be Tom Sawyer Island, Cali River Rapids, the Jungle Cruise, or Expedition Everest? Remember, I'm human. I make mis I make a lot of mistakes. You just don't always see all of them. And the answer is, of course, Cali River Rapids. Now, I know a lot of you probably thought, as expected, that they are from the Jungle Cruise. <laughs> it is not from the Jungle Cruise. These are all... Uh, names of boats that you can find on Cali River Rapids, which when's the last time you rode Cali River Rapids? I probably haven't been on in, I'll bet you it's been 10 years since I've been on Cali River Rapids. So, all right, next question number four, where in Walt Disney World? Have you heard this phrase? It was born in challenge in a thousand years of challenging the seas. That's my water-based captain voice, by the way. Is it the living seas, pirates of the Caribbean or Caribbean? Maelstrom or 20,000 Leagues under the... That wasn't even... That was a starting to go down the road of doing the impression I'm not. It's just 20,000 Leagues under the sea. Where have you heard it was born in challenge in a thousand years of challenging the seas? Where do you think that quote was or is heard from in Walt Disney World we're computing the answers. How well do you think you're doing, by the way? How do you think you're doing so far on the uh, on the challenges? It is, of course, Maelstrom, which confused hardly anybody except those seven or eight people that chose something else. Uh, it is from Maelstrom. May you and your giant oil derrick rest in peace. Um, I still, <laughs> I still always wondered why there was such an uprising about the closing of an attraction that nobody ever went to. Uh, where in Walt Disney World have you heard? This phrase, he's coming as the headless horseman. Again, not meant to be a direct, uh, um, it, it is a direct quote. It is not necessarily an impression. Is it from Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress, Walt Disney's Country Bear Jamboree, Walt Disney's American Adventure, or Walt Disney's Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor? Is it from Carousel of Progress, Country Bear Jamboree, or the American Adventure, or Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor? He's coming as the headless horseman. I think a lot of you seem to be getting I think everybody, even Becky, might be getting this one right. This question was clearly way too easy, or my impression was just that good. I'm going to go with the latter. It is, of course. I'm not even going to wait for the supercomputer to finish computing all of the answers, because I know we're on a little bit of a delay. But obviously, he's coming as a headless horseman is from Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. Nobody. I had to think of a better option than the Country Bear Jamboree, because that fooled no one. Monsters and Glaflor. Not just in glass floor, God, I've got a few of you. Uh, but he's coming as a head. It's Jimmy. No, sorry. Uh, Jimmy is not going. It's, it's, that should be the next question is who is actually coming as a headless horseman? Whose boyfriend or date is coming as a headless horseman? Memento Mori was what in God's name happened here? Well, there you go. I'm not even going to read the questions. If you get this wrong, you're, this is the wrong show. <laughs> Good Lord, Lewis. <laughs> Oh, man. Human being makes mistakes. Huge headache a couple of hours ago. Huge headache. Memento Mori was actually previously known as Three Acres. That that was the answer. It was known as the... Please don't add... This may be the only one that everybody, including Becky, is going to get right. God, I hope Becky said 15 acres. Like, no, Memento Mori was, of course, known as 15 acres. Yeah, Memento Mori had a lot... That location had a number of different names. They were a lot more clever than Three Acres, 21 Acres, and 15 Acres. Clearly... I was using a template from a past show. And some <laughs> Thank you, by the way. Thank you for all of you putting down some of the uh, some of the other answers. That was great. All right. Moving on from uh, Memento Mori. Who says, welcome to our little transdimensional joyride, folks? Is it Dr. Seeker, Dr. Lair, Dr. Femus? Dr. Femus or Chairman Clench? 
Is it Dr. Seeker, Dr. Lair, Dr. Femus, or is it Chairman Clench, who said, Welcome to our little trans-dimensional joyride, folks. There's a number of trans-dimensional attractions, or have been, in the world. So it's actually, it could be a, a number of of different ones. I think this one's easy, too. I think, I think I'm going to say 83.7% of you are going to get this one correct. And the answer is, of course, we know the answer is, of course, Dr. Grant Seeker. Bravo. Well done. Well done, everybody, except for Becky. It is, of course, Dr. Grant Seeker from Dinosaur Countdown to Extinction for however long it remains that dinosaur-themed attraction, but I digress. What is the name of the court? This one, this one I think is going to be tough. If you get this right without guessing, you're good. What was the name of the courthouse in the Great Movie Ride Western scene? If you went to our Great Movie Ride dinner, you actually walked through and ate dinner in this scene. Is it the Waco Courthouse, the Essex County Courthouse, the El Paso County Courthouse, or the Cochise County Courthouse? As you went through or dined in the Western scene, there was a building off to the side which was a, um, a facade of a courthouse. Was it the Waco, Essex County, El Paso County, or Cochise County Courthouse? Because the computer is in the process of tallying up answers, I will tell you it's not the Essex County Courthouse because that's where I worked when I clerked for a judge right out of law school. So uh, that was the red herring there. Although most of you thought that <laughs> that was it. it actually, how funny. It was actually the Cochise County Courthouse. So... <laughs> There you go. The other ones I just sort of made up, they were Texas Western sounding names. So yeah, uh, I was, I clerked in the Essex County Courthouse for a year. Haleo in Disney Springs. And if you think about the, the exterior of the Haleo building in Disney Springs, which has great tapas food, by the way, if only there was somebody that would come to do a live review there, I'm still looking. Haleo in Disney Springs is designed to remember, resemble or remumble chorizo, an artichoke, a pineapple, or a burrito. The building is actually shaped to sort of be an interpretive structure modeled after what? Chorizo, which is some darn fine sausage, an artichoke, artichoke, artichoke <laughs> a pineapple, or a burrito. Now, if you remember, you might be getting confused thinking it's a pineapple because that's what Bongo's Cuban Cafe was actually, it actually had like this huge pineapple structure outside. It's why I chose pineapple and I chose burrito because I'm craving a burrito. But if you look, it actually looks like the leaves of an artichoke. Mom, I miss your artichokes that are stuffed with the breadcrumbs and the garlic. Ay, so good. Clearly, I'm famished. I haven't eaten all day today. So next time you go to Haleo, Take a look from the outside and see if you can see what I'm talking about. All right, what attractions ride vehicle? Question 10, what attraction ride vehicles are XP-37s? This one I think should be easy. Is it Stitch's Great Escape? Is it Star Tours? Is it Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin? Or is it the Astro Orbiter? What ride, attractions ride vehicles are XP-37? Amanda Boardwine says, I've never actually noticed that it looks like an artichoke. Now you won't be able to unsee it if you actually think that it looks like an artichoke. What attraction vehicles are XP-37s? Katie McNamara, I need to go to Disney Springs and see this. Uh, Katie, I think we should go to Disney Springs. I think we should eat there, finish the night off with a funky chicken and a donut from Everglazed right across the street. The answer is, of course, drum roll, please. I don't have a drum roll sound, do I? Uh, no, but it is, of course, Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin. So there you go. And if you look, you can actually see it on the side. And I think they could even mention it in the queue as well. Although, if you had wings, I miss you so. Would I prefer if you had wings or Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin? I don't know. During Epcot's Festival of the Arts, what is the name of Figment's scavenger hunt? By the way, did we see the news that supposedly there's a Figment movie in development by Seth Rogen? There's a Deadline article I linked to in the clubhouse. Is the name of the scavenger hunt One Little Spark, Figment's Snack Attack, Dreamfinder's Quest, or Brush with the Masters? 
What is the name of the scavenger hunt during Epcot's Festival of the Arts hosted by our little purple friend, Figment? Is it One Little Spark? Figment's Snack Attack, which is probably what I would call my approach to Festival of the Arts. Dreamfinder's Quest or the Brush with the Masters? I'm seeing lots of different answers come in here. I'm really curious to see how the... Um, Wow, tied. Dreamfinder's Quest and Brush with the Masters are tied with 42. Figment Snack Attack and then One Little Spark. I still believe in my little heart of hearts we're getting a Figment announcement at some point. Maybe sooner than we think. I think the Figment announcement is coming sooner than we think. We'll see. We will see if that actually happens or not. Who owned the aforementioned and alluded to Bongo's Cuban Cafe in downtown Disney? Yes, I know it was an amalgamation of people who were on the board, but what celebrity was a what is a primary owner of Bongo's Cuban Cafe? Was it J-Lo, Gloria Estefan, and the Miami Sound Machine, Carmen Miranda, or Beyonce? What'd you say? Name two Beyonce songs, Lou? Name one Beyonce song, Lou? I have no idea. I'm going to tell you the answer is not Beyonce. And I just, I tried to find somebody somewhat relevant and it was either putting in Beyonce or Megan the Stallion, which I only know from She-Hulk. Um, and if you know who Carmen Miranda is, chances are you remember Parachute Pants as well as I do. So let's see if you got it right. And all of you, everyone got it right and knew, of course, almost everybody. Um, got it right and knew that it was Gloria Estefan. Uh, Becky right now is actually Googling to see who Gloria Estefan and the Miami Sound Machine actually is. Amy, Amy Crocodera says, fantastic and fun restaurant. They had great appetizers, especially when they first opened. Went a little downhill near the end, but I liked it when it first opened. Which of these restaurants is themed after Mary Poppins? Is it Rose and Crown? Is it Gasparilla's? Citrico's? Or 1900 Park Fair? Which of these is themed after Mary Poppins? I could have phrased this question a little bit better. I probably could have. I, I should have quase phrased this question better because there might be elements of Mary Poppins in one of the other restaurants, but there's only one. In my mind, I had a one correct answer. So we'll see if, um, if you get it. Uh, Sue Passauer, I too am thinking about stuffed artichokes right now. Like really big ones, like with a lot of garlic and a lot of breadcrumbs. In my, oh, my God, I could sit and just eat those for hours. And you get to the heart, and you have to, like, work your way to get to the heart of it. So good. So good. It is, of course, the answer is um, Citrico's. So congratulations. So so I know 1900 Park Fair has elements of Mary Poppins. It's technically not necessarily themed after Mary Poppins. So uh, Citrico's. And if you haven't been... So I haven't been to a full meal at Citrico's because nobody will go with me. Nobody will go and do a live dining review, possibly even in the next few days, whatever. Where in Walt Disney World have you heard this phrase? There. You see how easy it is to get from one place to another? You simply float through the air. That takes some getting used to. Again, bad reading, but is it the timekeeper? Mission to Mars, if you had wings, or if you could fly. The short-lived, if you had if you had wings, if you could fly, Delta's dream fight, they were dream flight. They were all sort of the same attraction. Though dream flight was not really very good at the very end, um, but if God, if you had wings, I'd love that attraction so very much. There, you see how easy it is to get from one place to another. You just simply float through the air. It takes some getting used to. And if you, let's see, if you get this retro now extinct attraction, it is of course if. It is, of course, Mission to Mars, which was originally Flight to the Moon. I like the Mission to Mars iteration better. You can still see, do you remember the, the bird on the runway? You can still see that video in the Mission Space Queue in Epcot Center. If that is your, I haven't ridden, I haven't ridden Mission Space in years either. Where in Walt Disney World? Question 15. Where in Walt Disney World have you heard this phrase? Now I am the ruler of the ocean. The waves obey my every whim getting in more into the role. The sea and all of its spoils bow to my power. I almost did it in the Becky voice, but I'm not going to I'm going to resist the temptation. Is the voyage of the little mermaid the living seas and it rained and it rained and it rained. Wait for it. The deluge. Is it Becky's stateroom on the Disney Wish? What? Or 20,000 League? Who put that in there? 
clearly that was not my doing. There, there, was, there were some shenanigans going on in the writing. Now, I am the ruler of all the ocean. The waves obey my every whim. The sea and all its spoils bow to my power. I actually think that's Becky standing on the bow of the Disney wish. Um, but it is, of course, the Voyager of Little Mermaid. You get extra credit if you said Becky stateroom on the Disney wish. I now have to find a way to get her to get out on her gigantic, like, balcony with her little hot tub and all that stuff and say that as she looks out over the vast ocean and I'll make a ticky tock video out of it. Where in Walt Disney World can you find Nana? Where can you find Nana? Who or what is Nana? That is for you to decide. Is it the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh? Is it Peter Pan's flight? Number three, Mr. Toad's wild ride. Or once again, is it the Country Bear Jamboree? Uh, okay, Mangello, it's you at Cabanas. Also true. Also appropriate. I miss Cabanas so very much. I, 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 I take that back. I really miss Cabanas a lot. I really miss Marceline Market on the Wish. What is the countdown until our December 5th Disney Wish cruise? I don't know, but where in Walt Disney World can you find Nana? Uh, it's no, and Nana is, it is not a typo. It is Nana. Nana the dog, as in Nana the dog house. And you actually hear one of the darling children could say, come on, Nana. And that's why nobody guessed Mr. Toad's wild ride. So Jeff Paquette says, I know one. I know one. Finally, I get one right. <clears throat> and it is, of course, Peter Pan's flight. Um, another attraction. I haven't been to the parks in a long time. We're going to do, you know what? After all this stuff is over and after I get through a couple of events that I have, we're going to just do like a live day, excuse me, in the parks. Choose the missing word in this phrase from Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. There goes blank in his humpmobile. He sure loves that horn. There goes black, blank in that humpmobile. He sure loves that horn. Is it there goes Schwartz? There goes Mr. Peabody. There goes Johnson, or there goes Fred in that Hutmobile. He sure loves that horn. Becky still has her Hutmobile. I think, what do you got, like 33,000 miles on that? You don't take it out very much. Uh, and that the Hutmobile, like, was a thing. There's actually something called a Hutmobile. There goes Blank in his Hutmobile. He sure loves that horn. Is it Schwartz, Mr. Peabody, Johnson, or Fred? And the answer is, of course, may the Schwartz be with you. There goes Schwartz in his Hutmobile. He sure loves that horn. Poor Fred. Um, overwhelming. Overwhelming number of ones got that one. I thought that was going to be way more tricky. Clearly, you pay attention in uh, in Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. All right, we're on question 17. We're question 18, about eight more to go. In the Great Movie Ride, which scene came directly after the Old West scene? Was it Tarzan? Raiders of the Lost Ark? Was it Gangster Alley or was it Alien? What scene came directly after the Old West scene? I know you're sort of playing it back in your mind, trying to remember which scene led into what scene. We're super familiar, but sometimes we don't remember each of the different sections. Tarzan was never my favorite. I didn't never love the Tarzan section. I mean, I've seen the Tarzan movie, but it was never my favorite section. What, was, what scene came directly after the Old West scene? Tarzan, Raiders, Gangster Alley, or Alien. What was your favorite scene? What was your favorite scene in The Great Movie Ride? How I Miss You So. It was, of course, Alien. Well, you do have a good memory. You do have... I know, Becky, that was, a, that was a great event. Like, and then dinner, like, dessert in the Wizard of Oz scene. The Good Witch was there. Man, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Um, Katie says, I never loved the zombie or the mummy scene. Uh, Kara Johnson was a total guest, never got to ride it. Wow. All right, so complete this phrase from an extinct Disney MGM or Disney's Hollywood Studios attraction. Dear Journal, it's me. Dot, dot, dot. It's me, Red. It's me, Quasimodo. It's me, Marty. Or it's me, Doug. Complete this phrase from an extinct Disney MGM or Hollywood Studios attraction. Dear Journal, it's me, Red. Dear Journal, it's me, Quasimodo. Dear Journal, it's me, Marty, or Dear Journal, it's me, Doug. This one, I think this is going to be more challenging because unless you saw the show, you would probably never know. And Red is a non-Disney movie reference. Uh, Quasimodo from the Hunchback of Notre Dame show. Marty 
which was actually a reference, it was an obscure reference to Martin Short, and Doug, obviously, is the answer from Doug Live. I may have seen that show twice. I didn't sort of grow up in the Doug Live era, um, and neither did my kids, so it was never. So uh, kudos to all of you who, uh, who got that one correct. I wouldn't know Doug if I ran him over on the street. All right, where in Walt Disney World can you find Cutthroat Corner? Is it Twitter? No, sorry. Where in Walt Disney World can you find Cutthroat Corner? Is it Pirates of the Caribbean, the Liberty Bell Riverboat, the Jungle Cruise, or once again, because I love the attraction and maybe it's the right answer, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Where can you find Cutthroat Corner? Laura says, oh my God, I'm awful at this. It's not about being good or bad. It's just about having fun. Maybe learning a piece of trivia that you can... Pay forward in the future. Uh, where in Walt Disney World can you find Cutthroat Corner? Pirates, Liberty Bell, the Jungle Cruise, or 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Becky, wrong Doug. Not the right Doug, not at all. Who is calling me? I'm almost tempted to answer it, but we're in the middle of trivia. Um, where can you find Walt Disney World in Cutthroat Corner? Very, wow. I really thought this was going to be more. Ch I clearly... Do I need to make these questions more challenging in the future? I just might, because you seem to know you're all doing very, very well. God, I hope we don't have a tie for the winner. It's going to make things really awkward. If so, you're all getting a sticker. So, where in Walt Disney World? Five more questions. Where in Walt Disney World have you heard this phrase? Whoa, what's this? Where am I? New Jersey? And literally, the person who reads this says, Jersey. Is this from the great movie ride? Superstar television? The Monster Sound Show, or Lights, Motors, Action, Rest in Peace. Where have you heard this phrase? Whoa, what is this? Where am I? New Jersey? And that's not how everybody, some people in Jersey, three quarters of the people in Jersey talk like that. Where in Walt Disney World have you heard this? Is it the great movie ride, Superstar Television, The Monster Sound Show, or Lights, Motors, Action? I'm learning that I need a copy of Lou's trivia book. Becky says, I like this pace. Um, I'm reading back on some of the comments that I have missed. Um, remember, you, only, you don't need to type the answer, just the number. Just I, I try to make it really, really easy for you. It is, of course, from the great movie. Wow, I thought this one was going to be a little tougher, too. I thought extinct things like Superstar and Monster Sound Show might have thrown people off because they were both around the same area. I thought maybe, well... Again, I'm not good at this. Wonders of Life. Let's go with something else that's extinct. The Wonders of Life Pavilion was at one time sponsored by MetLife, Cigna, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Or I'm not going to even try to do the Gilbert voice. Is it? Is it Aflac? The Wonders of Life Pavilion was once sponsored by MetLife, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Cigna, or Aflac. I think, wow, you guys are literally quoting the great movie ride. I'm incredibly impressed. One more reason why I, I love all you. The Wonders of Life Pavilion, soon to be the Play Pavilion, was, of course, sponsored by, I see answers are still coming in. It doesn't matter. The computer's already telling it. It was sponsored by MetLife. So there you go. Very well done. Very, very well done. Very impressive. We have four questions left. How well do you think you're doing? Are you have first of all, do you like this? Are you enjoying the trivia questions? I know we haven't done this in a while. Which of these was not was not an extinct attraction at either Disney M or, or Hollywood Studios was not an extinct attraction or show? The Magic of Disney Animation, Mickey's Audition, Honey I Shrunk the Kids Adventure Zone or Halloween Town High. Which of these is not an extinct attraction or show from the Disney M or Disney Ho Disney's Hollywood Studios? Which of these was not an extinct attraction? Magic of Disney Animation, Mickey's Audition, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Adventure Zone, or Halloween Town High? Uh, somebody says, thank you for doing this, Lou, keeping this new Orlando local's mind off the storm. Shelby, hope you are doing well. I hope you stocked up and uh, are staying safe. Um, again, you guys are, I, I thought this would throw you off too. 
The answer is, of course, Halloween Town. I don't even know the like. I just made it up because I couldn't figure it. Because I kept on putting right answers in there. I'm like, no, Lou, that really was an extinct attraction. Because MGM, we did this. Somebody can look that up. We did a show about like extinct shows of Walt Disney World. There was some bizarre stuff that came in and out of MGM Studios. Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. I'm looking at you. Which of these movies once had a Walt Disney World attraction? Which of these movies once had a Walt Disney World attraction? Pretty Woman, Home on the Range, Follow Me Boys, or Brother Bear? Which of those actually had a uh, an attraction in Walt Disney World? This one's got to be, like, it's got to be more confusing, or, or a little bit. I hope. Pretty Woman, Home on the Range, Follow Me Boys, or Brother Bear, and those are all, like, actually real thing. like, they are real things. And the answer is, Hollywood's Pretty Woman was an attraction. So remember, 1990, uh, Pretty Woman was released, and in the Theater of the Stars on Sunset Boulevard, there was a show um, called Hollywood's Pretty Woman, which wasn't really about the movie, but it was sort of loosely based on a title. It was about all of the pretty women from Hollywood, so it was a bit of a trick question. Which of these once existed in Epcot Center? Or just Epcot. Which of these once existed in Epcot Center? Was it Mickey's Mart, a communicator, the House of Treasure, or the Earful Tower? Tower. Which of these once existed in Epcot? Yeah, I should have, I should have phrased that question a little bit better, too. Again, tired, headache battening down hatches it doesn't matter i'm human it's all it's all a matter of fun which of these once existed in epcot uh becky thank you show 442 extinct attractions we wish we'd bring back which of these once existed in epcot center was it mickey's mart the communicator house of treasure or the earful tower and the answer is of course come on computer the answer is of course well i'm going to tell you it's the communicator from the agent p world showcase adventure we are now getting the new uh, interactive adventure game. I don't remember when it said it's launching. I believe in October we're getting the new adventure game in um, in Epcot. So I'll be interested. I don't. I think I only played the H and P World Showcase Adventure like once or twice. But I love these sort of additional um, layers on top of the experience. What was the original name of the lunching pad, which has or had really good jalapeno stuffed cream cheese pretzels. Anyway, the original name of the lunching pad at Rocket Tower Plaza in Tomorrowland at Walt Disney World is Ursa's Major Minor Mart, the Space Bar, the Space Place, or the Film and Glow Kiosk. I will tell you that these are all real names of things that once existed in Walt Disney World. The original name of the lunching pad was at Ursa's Major Minor Mart, the Space Bar, the Space Place, or the Film and Glow Kiosk. All real, actual things that existed at one time in Walt Disney World. Many of those actually in Tomorrowland. Ursa's, who thought Ursa's Major Minor Mart was the, just sort of rolled off the tongue? It was, of course, ah, did you hear that? It was, of course, the Space Bar. Although I do like the Space Place. It sounds like an old, like, 1982 arcade in the mall. And the Film and Glow Kiosk, it, it was a thing. Um, it was actually a place where you used to have to buy film and film um, um, camera bulbs. Remember the square camera? Of course you don't, because you're not old like me. The square camera bulbs. All right, here are the winners, or should I say, well, you're all, whatever. You're all winners, because I love all of you. Well, congratulations to Kai Leighton, Katie Duncan, and Carly Ectenacher. Please tell me I got that even remotely close to being correct, but it looks like based on score and speed, Kai Leighton just eked out uh, everyone else. I hope you enjoyed it. Kai, do me a favor. Send me your address. I will pick out just for you. I will pick out a special prize from the WW Radio Pli prize closet. Um, wait, Cam Hopman says I'm a broadcast meteorologist. On my break in southern Indiana, Ian is going to be producing winds near 75 miles per hour in our neck of the woods overnight. Hope you guys have battened down the hatches. I believe they are battened. I believe the hatches are, uh, in fact, battened. But congratulations, Kai, Katie, Carly, all of you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed trivia tonight. Uh, I always think these are a lot of fun. So Becky said I won. 
by not getting much. Becky, that's a smart strategy because you're like, well, wait a minute. I don't normally do well. So now if I say I'm doing it intentionally, it's going to look like I'm trying to throw it. Brava. Very, very, very well done. So, um, all right. That um, That is going to do it for tonight. Now you got me thinking I need to go and make sure I've got like everything off the front porch and the back porch and everything else like that. And I'm hearing the winds beginning to start a whipping. And if you're in Florida, go make sure everything is uh, locked up tight as well. Thank you again for being here this week, every week. Again, don't forget, this is wrong. And both things are wrong in here. There's three seats left. And if you use, use code PODCAST200, you can actually save. I, I added the code this week. You can save $200 off Momentum if you would like to come. Don't forget, too, that I believe, Becky, correct me if I'm wrong, we, we actually have a little bit of room left on our cruise in the Disney Wish December 5th. Uh, so if you want to get out, cruise with us, come and join us on the Wish. If you can't make the Wish, we're going to do it all again. The Fantasy in April, eight nights overnight. I cannot wait for that. And then uh, if Becky wasn't here, I would have announced other stuff that I came up with that I haven't told her about yet, but we'll have that conversation soon. If you are part of the Nation family, thank you so very much. I sincerely love and appreciate you. You literally keep the lights on, hopefully all night, overnight tonight. Um, you keep the show going. You keep the live show going. Um, you can find out how you can help the show and our Dream Team Project to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America for as little as a dollar a month by going to www.radionation.com. Also, if you haven't become a member of the WW Radio Clubhouse, please go and hop in. Uh, it is an incredibly wonderful, welcoming community that you have helped to create. So please, even if you're a member now, invite a friend to come and join us. And when you're looking to come to World Land, at some of the other adventures that I'm going to announce uh unbeknownst to Becky, you can go and, and visit Becky. I mean, not literally visit Becky. That looks like her house, but it's not actually her house. But you can go and visit Becky and her amazing team of agents, many of whom are right here watching tonight over at mousefantravel.com. And finally, most importantly, please, please, please always remember to choose the good. Wait, not finally. Go join the spoiler support group. Forget that Loki's behind there. She-Hulk comes out tonight. We're going to talk about She-Hulk starting tomorrow so come join our spoiler support group to talk all things uh, Marvel, Disney, Star Wars, and then, then, oh, I mean, keep in the back of your mind all the time to choose the good, um, anything and everything that you do. And that is going to do it tonight. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for keeping me company as we ride out uh, Hurricane Ian, which will hopefully just sort of make his way very quickly with no damage um, to anybody or anything. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here tonight, for being part of the community, more importantly, for being part of my extended family. I sincerely, sincerely love and appreciate you. If there's ever anything I could do for you, please just reach out and let me know. So until next time, until next week, um, I love you. See ya. <laughs>